Hi, and welcome to the Girl Boss Method podcast hosted by myself, uh, Richie Bra. So those of you that are watching the podcast today or watching our, our uh, weekly educational topic, um, it's actually Monday tonight. So we've changed the date and we've made the date Monday just to, to kind of change things up and allow people um, an opportunity to join the call on a completely different day. We found that Wednesdays weren't really working right so for those of you that are listening I've got one of the girls from inside the program on with me today her name is Naima so I will be asking her questions and she'll be asking questions back I'm sure <laughs> in relation to the topic um, but yes yeah, so for those of you that are tuned in this is the first Monday that we've scheduled the call it's Monday at 8 p.m. We will now be adding in an additional call on a Friday at 6.30 p.m. And that just gives us an opportunity to check in as a group, um, to catch up, to maybe just chill at the end of the day um, or the end of the week, have some reflection about how the week's gone. And for those of you that have not been able to attend the Monday, it also allows you an opportunity to ask questions um, once you've caught up on the topic. So I'd always advise go back, watch topics, ask questions. And that way I can make sure that I'm offering, you know, the most in terms of, you know, the educational and, and the topics and the information that we all, we all live for, right? So without further ado, I'm going to introduce the topic for today. Um, so those of those ladies that are involved or on the Girl Boss Method program itself, they will be watching the slides as I go through. Um, and those of you that are listening to the podcast, you'll only be able to hear this as an audio. Right. So the topic for today is an introduction to insulin resistance. So this is one of those things where I guess insulin resistance, when we hear about it and we relate it to like, let's say, uh, fat loss or weight loss or, you know, reasons why people um, might be unhealthy or, you know, maybe even the like the potential for um, disease and, and stuff like that. Perhaps I'm being a bit extreme there, but I'll explain why shortly. Insulin um, resistance is a can be a complicated topic and it can be a topic that we can actually overcomplicate as well especially when we're thinking about you know how to you know deal with or or adapt things when it comes to our training and our nutrition and our lifestyles when it comes to insulin resistance um so the first thing that i'm going to do is actually introduce or explain what insulin actually is so i'm going to ask Naima, because this is, I think, Naima, you asked um, for a training on insulin resistance. Is that correct? Or was it your topic? Um, yeah, it was. Perfect. So I know that you were interested in it. I also had a request um, from somebody else as well on the, on the program. Do you know what insulin is and what the role of insulin is? It helps your blood cells like uh, not absorb like kind of use the sugar that you had um I did I did a level biology but I it's that's all, right it all now but I think that's the gist of it right <laughs> yeah so basically I'll uh try and summarize it very quickly so would you believe I'm uh MNU nutritionist um so I'm certified and I'm on their register as well um the I have to go back to my notes all the time and actually during this call I've got I've got various folders out and bookmarked um as well sort of making a couple of notes from from what I've studied as well on the topic um so insulin just to to put it out there is um you could call it a hormone and it is released by the pancreas um, it's released, um, well, it's produced by beta cells of the pancreas. It's going to affect the metabolism of our carbohydrates and our protein. 
It's uh, going to do lots of other various, very confusing. We won't go into too much detail, um, but it's going to also have an effect on things like sodium retention and actually water or sodium excretion and water retention as well. And so that might become quite interesting or relevant later on. Um, when we are thinking about carbohydrates and the role of insulin, um, ideally, insulin is, if I put it on the next slide, let's, let's have a look. Insulin, obviously, we know that it's released by the pancreas, and we know that it's going to come in to the blood and it's going to do something to the cells. So we can consider it as being a storage and fuel selector hormone, although it won't have any direct effect on things like fat loss or weight loss. There is a role that it has that will allow us to metabolize glucose. So that's what we're basically thinking about here. Um, it, insulin actually causes the nutrients to be shuttled into the cells. So when we are thinking about cells, it's not, you know, just fat cells. We're also thinking about muscle cells here as well. Um, so the way that I would liken that is, let's say you've got your pancreas, your, you know, insulin is released as a result of having a meal. So whether that, whatever the um, macronutrient composition of that meal is, it will cause what we call um, a spike in the blood glucose levels. So the idea is that we want those nutrients to be shuttled into the cells. Um, it's also going to do things like um, switch off fat oxidation, so the fat burning. Um, but that's actually... You know, you might think that's a bad thing, but the reason why it's doing that is because it's metabolizing the carbohydrates. It's increasing that metabolism of them. Uh, it can also decrease cortisol. So often we think about, you know, we don't want like massive of increased cortisol. We think about that stress hormone. We think about, you know, the the likelihood of that maybe increasing our um abdominal storage, um, not helping us with our fat loss, that sort of thing. So it actually decreases that. So this is the thing. This is why it gets confusing is because sometimes it can be seen as like a bad thing out there. You know, you don't want insulin to be released, uh, you know, or insulin does things or you don't want to have carbs, let's say, because it's going to trigger that insulin response and then you've got to like push out the glucose into the cells um that sort of thing um another good point of it would be that it helps increase one of our satiety or fullness hormones called leptin which will obviously have an effect on your weight loss your fat loss and that sort of thing because it's going to allow you uh, it's like a signaling hormone and allow you to understand when you are full, right? Do you understand? Do you remember leptin at all? We've gone over that before. Um, so it's it's the one that we're, you know, when we get into quite extreme dieting phases, especially as we start to lose a lot of weight, sometimes that can decrease and the other hormone, ghrelin, which I always liken to a gremlin, can start to increase and that can make us feel very hungry um right that's enough on on that so far we had a couple of questions as well about oh let's have a look we had a couple of questions i'm just gonna have a quick look because naima you sent some through as well but we had someone asking about the difference between insulin resistance and diabetes. So <clears throat> that one is an interesting one because you can be insulin resistance can be almost like the precursor to diabetes. Uh, we can also look at it as something that someone may have um, if they are PCOS as well, if they have PCOS. And when we're thinking about diabetes and, and in relation to the insulin resistance the one that like 
most of the population these days should be concerned about would be diabetes type 2. Um, the type 1, unfortunately, we cannot do anything about. That's really a job for the doctors and the specialists to deal with. Um, but when it comes to the difference... You can if you if you become insulin resistance and you allow that to carry on for a long time, then you could put yourself in the whole pre-diabetic situation and then obviously have type two diabetes later on. Um, so that's why we obviously don't want this to be an issue long term. Um, Naima, you also had some questions as well. So those were definitely related to things like foods as well. Um, and I think you talked about reversal as well. We're going to talk about those shortly, but I just wanted to cover that first one now. Um, so let's move along. Have you got any questions so far? Am I going at a good pace? Cool. Perfect. For those of you that are listening, you know, if if you feel like anything just sounds confusing, then just slow slow it down. Have a listen again. Write, take a pen and paper. Write some notes. Write things down. If you feel like there's anything that you want me to go over again or to dive into a bit more, then please let me know. Um, at the end of the day, I'm I know I I'm a nutritionist, but I am like I'm not a doctor. So I'm not going to know everything to do with this topic. Um, so at the end of the day, everything that we do is more about applying it to you and your lifestyle. And if it's something that you are concerned with, then we'll make some adaptations when it comes to your training and your nutrition as well. And we can start looking at, at um, you know, perhaps maybe even types of uh you know, food or, yeah. So especially when we think about carbs, who's GI, the uh, glycemic index. So we think about low GI and high GI, GI stuff as well. So we want to kind of look at those for you specifically and make sure that, you know, depending on if you are insulin resistance, how we can look at changing your diet to help you help accommodate your you're dealing with that, right? So normal insulin resistance. Um, so it's known as a physiological insulin resistance. Glucose, for example, is the brain's primary fuel source. And if we are looking at those low carbohydrate diets, um, that can actually, although we might look at it and go, it's going to stop some insulin resistance, you know, the cells, stopping them from blocking that insulin to come in and push the glucose in towards them. Um, some low carbohydrate diets may actually cause some insulin resistance of the muscle. So it will stop the muscle uptaking that gluco glucose out of the bloodstream in order to protect the brain. Now that I've explained it like that, Naima, does that make sense rather than reading what we've got on the screen <laughs> um yes but how how does it protect like how is it protecting the brain by doing that um because you're causing like uh so let's say for example you're in a on a low carbohydrate diet and um you know the because that carbohydrate or the glucose is the brain's fuel source if you are going for a really low carb diet um again the process i cannot remember the name for it gluconogenesis is that right can't remember uh naima what did you study again biology was it or no i studied geography but i did a2 biology Okay, cool. Perfect. So again, the, you know, this is starting to step on territory that I am like, scientifically wise, I, you know, I don't want to get things wrong. Okay, we kind of did talk about that before we started our uh, session or training today. Um, so my understanding would be that if you are limiting your carbs, and you are 
you know, the carbs, you might be trying to shuttle the, the, you know, the instant. So you've had a meal. Um, it's actually been low in carbs. Um, through whatever process that happens, glucose is produced. Glucose is sitting in the bloodstream. It's getting ready to be shuttled into the cells, like the fat cells and the muscle cells. Now, let's say there's low carbohydrates present your glucose is not going to go into the muscle cells. It's going to go towards the brain first because ideally that's more important than I know gains are important and utilizing the uh, carbohydrates is very important, especially when we're thinking about, um, you know, people who have type two diabetes. There's also a, you know, a primary issue as well, which is protecting vital organs as well. Um, yeah, but mainly I've, I've kept this in there because it has come from one of the lectures I've done and yeah, it's got a nice reference in there as well to a study that, um, you can have a look into later on. Um, and then also similarly, I guess you could akin, like say that it's the same idea here, but in terms of pregnant females will also experience some insulin resistance to protect the fetus. So I think what they're trying to say here with this point is insulin resistance is not always a bad thing. Like it might need to happen, right? To protect things that are really important, aka a developing baby and your brain. Um, so we can't be low carb forever because A, we love carbs and B, I mean, carbohydrates, you know, what I think the main thing is having uh, an excess of calories or having, um, you know, a diet that where your blood sugar levels or your they're constantly that glucose is constantly raised and elevated. I think that is the thing that we need to worry about. Um, so it's all about ensuring that we've got that dispersal and that utilization and that uptake of those nutrients by your muscle cells, right? And that's why we say that resistance training is such a good thing for those people that are resistance, resistant to insulin's actions, or there is like the next slide, the current slide says there's a a B better cell, beta cell function defect. Okay. So I've got currently on, for those of you that are listening, I've got a slide up right now. And this is basically talking about diabetes type one and type two. Um, I kind of kept the type two in there because that's the one that we're more uh, interested in. Because obviously if you are insulin resistant for a long period of time, we could be looking at the danger of diabetes type 2 occurring. So the diagnosis, don't really know what the 90% means. Does that mean 90% of people or 90% of those that have diabetes? Um, seeming that 5 to 10% of diabetes diagnosis is type 1, 90% is type 2 of the diagnosis. Um, so the symptoms, they can appear gradually, so I believe things like um, thirst, um, we can also be like predisposed as well. So we've got some like cause and risk factors as well. Um, so age, so obviously as we get older, so I think 40 plus, we're looking at that. Um, we're looking at like um, obesity as well, your, your diet style how you eat are you are you eating um more than you you need is there a, a calorie uh in intake or uptake issue is there more than you're actually using is there an energy balance issue uh your family history unfortunately being inactive and our ethnic background so those of us that are asian or black we will have a higher risk or a higher yeah, right. High risk factor of becoming type two diabetes. Um, anyone in your family? I definitely have it in my family. My my granddad and, and my gran. Um, 
both type two di- diabetic. Um, I'd say that my granddad was quite active. Uh, my grand not so much. Um, again, you know, did they resistance train? Did they exercise? Did they were they mindful about their their diet overall? We're not. Sh- I'm not sure. To be fair, were they thinking about um, you know having more protein? Were they thinking about energy? intake as well so yeah lots of different things to kind of think about it's getting all quite kind of serious now um but yeah management ideally just to keep it short exercise a healthy diet medications again this is where your doctor comes in you know if they've if they've said that you are type 2 diabetic um yes or even if you are experiencing insulin resistance all right. So what we do know is overall in terms of helping the, the insulin resistance issue um, and reversal, if you like, um, weight loss can potentially help. Um, we are also looking at even just five to 10 percent weight loss has been shown to improve the insulin resistance of those cells. Uh, there's a study here from Schneck et al. 2009. Um, and then, yeah, just more studies as well to say that, you know, both men and women, um, they show, you know, if they've got like a 10% reduction in their weight or even losing 10 kilos, uh, that will be associated. Um, it won't be the reason, but it will be associated in a reduction in that insulin resistance. So more studies written there. Does that all make sense to you, Naima? Perfect. All right. Then we're also thinking about, um, yeah, along with the the weight loss, we're thinking about reductions in visceral fat as well. Okay. So we've kind of gone through the slides for the moment, but I am going to answer some of those questions that we had. Anything... um, that you you want to ask before we get into your specific questions? No. Okay. Perfect. All right. So I did want to just read. I'm just having a quick look at some of my notes because I am I have got my notes here as well. Um, for example, I thought this was quite interesting. Um so we've kind of said it already, but insulin's job is to put stuff inside the cells. Okay. When we are insulin resistant, we are keeping stuff, stuff outside of the cells. Just to put it, put it quite blankly. And obviously we're thinking about our nutrients there. You can be insulin resistant in one area, but not in another. So for example, your fat cells could be insulin resistant. Uh, so they're obviously not taking up the nutrients then your muscle cells could be insulin sensitive now i think we'll probably get into a little bit more about the insulin resistance as we move on this was supposed to be an introduction i hope we haven't gone too deep um but we will be doing some more trainings on pcos for example and um i'm also keen to maybe even do one on diabetes as well does that sound like that would be a good one to to talk about Naima? Yeah, um, I think it would be useful to know kind of how to avoid it. And... Yeah, so I guess it almost feels like this is like a, a like a, a a precursor to the diabetes type two. Um, yeah, which obviously, you know, I don't think any of us want to go down that route. That's um, pretty scary stuff. Um, you know, you will, if you get diabetes type two, you will have likely other health issues as well. And, um, you know, some of the things that we want to kind of think about to improve that insulin sensitivity. And, you know, we've talked about it already, but you want to maintain a healthy weight. Uh, We want to reduce the abdominal fat. I know that for South Asians, um, if we have a larger abdominal area, we are again, increasing that risk. Um, And I believe that for us, it does tend to be an area that we just naturally, we store 
abdominal fat. So it's, it's not great, but you know, um, we want to increase our physical activity. So, um, I haven't got it written down, but I had it written down somewhere that actually doing HIIT training can help. HIIT training um, and doing uh, resistance training as well can help with that sensitivity. Um, so we want to think about that strength training. So we're looking to really, everything is not just about weight loss. I know that's what we've, and fat loss, and that's what we've mentioned, but we want to try and build muscle mass. We want to look at that muscle tissue as a major site for the glucose uptake. Um, and then when we're thinking about our, like, for example, uh, our diet, we want to try and focus on more of a balanced diet where we're thinking about overall, you know, we might need to reduce um, our intake of refined carbs. So, you know, and processed foods, we want to focus on more like whole foods, whole foods seem to help everything out there. Um, you know, at the end of the day, I think, like I always say, we want to live a little, we can't live a lifestyle eating um, heavily refined and processed, ultra processed foods, it's just not good for us. Um, just in general, even when we're thinking about like, not just macronutrients, but we're thinking about all the micronutrients as well, the wonderful things that we get from having things like fruit, vegetable, whole grains, uh, you know, and healthy fats as well are mega important as well. Um, again, the main thing here, you know, when it comes to the diet is, um, you know, not overeating. Um, we we don't want to like put on more weight and, and make it worse. Um, it's not to say that this is unique to, to weight itself. Um, we do know that the people, for example, with PCOS, they can be lean, they can be, uh, you know, uh, lower body weight, and they can still have PCOS, and they can still be insulin resistant. Um, so it's just, again, things are going to have to be specific to you as an individual. Uh, a one size definitely isn't, you know, one size doesn't fit all when when it comes to um, that stuff as well. And then when we're thinking about blood sugar levels uh, to help stabilize those, you know, dietary fiber is always good. Again, it's the same sort of things again and again. Um, I am just thinking about something because I did see something about the omega-3 and the vitamin D supplementation being helpful. Um, so definitely saw it somewhere and I'm pretty sure I bookmarked it. Um, oh gosh. Here we go. And that's the thing when I was like studying as well, it wouldn't just all be in one lecture. It would be like broken down into various different things as well. Um, but what I do know is that supplementation of vitamin D and omega-3 are definitely helpful. Uh, yes, I think we may have found it. Maybe not. Aha, uh -huh, here we go. Right. So the in you know the sort of word on the omega 3 supplementation oh wow in healthy individuals the supplementation will not affect the insulin sensitivity so the ability of those cells the sensitivity of those cells to take that glucose and, and you know suck it out basically um it's not going to have an effect on that that's interesting However, insulin resistance can be improved with supplementation. So again, when it comes to looking at studies, I think most people, you know, different studies will always test different things. And yeah, a lot of it really depends on what they're looking at. But they were looking at specifically supplementation of EPA and DHA. Um, so that will have a different effect in terms of that insulin resistance. Hmm. 
And then let's see what the word on vitamin D was. Uh -huh. So vitamin D is linked to insulin sensitivity. So I guess people will have an issue with uh, decreased insulin sensitivity and, and higher, you know, fasting glucose levels, that thing that they they test when you are finding out from the doctors whether you have like pre-diabetes or diabetes. Um, I believe that they've said that it's usually an issue when people have low vitamin D levels. So this is generally based on observational studies so it's not rather than a causation it's an like a an association to say i think all of us need to be taking vitamin d regardless so that's the word on that and then here we go high intensity interval training is shown to increase insulin sensitivity and improve blood glucose control um and then also Increasing your need. We did talk about that a couple of weeks back, but, um, you know, reduce your time spent sitting by light walking, um, body weight resistance um, that improves your glycemic control. And there's a, a study by Kohlberg 2017 as well on that one. So ideally regular physical activity generally is going to be encouraged for that blood glucose management. Should we get to your answers now <laughs> or questions, questions and answers? Um, right. So when we're thinking about apple cider vinegar, I think you asked the question, is it beneficial to take apple cider vinegar um, and or green tea? Um, so some research may suggest that it might help improve the insulin function and the glucose metabolism. What we have to think about, you can incorporate this in your daily lifestyle, you can add it, but it's not going to be a sole treatment for being insulin resistant. I think it's fair to say that there are going to be lots of things that affect it. Um, and it's looking at your whole lifestyle as a whole and I don't think we can just say that having the apple cider vinegar is going to be the key to stopping you having that issue. Um, again, when it comes to this sort of stuff, like, you know, and actually even determining whether you are insulin resistant, that's the doctor's job, isn't it? They're going to do the tests and, and find out if that is a problem. Um, and then we're thinking of, again, I think we've kind of covered a little bit about this already, but you know, the diet in general, um, what foods or types of foods to choose or avoid. So again, as we talked about at the beginning, as long as I haven't lost you here, we've got the pancreas, you're going to eat a meal, whatever the uh, macronutrient um, structure is of that meal, you're going to have the meal and we're going to have elevated blue blood glucose levels. That is normal for that to happen and there are normal levels to have as well um, I can't tell you what those are exactly but I know that people who have um, an issue with um, you know the the secretion of insulin perhaps maybe the secretion of insulin will occur from the pancreas and the blood where we are where people are insulin resistance the blood glucose level will stay higher in the bloodstream for longer so it's not being shuttled so if we're thinking about that bus you know you've got these little insulin buddies they come out of the pancreas they jump into the bloodstream and they're like hey we're here to do our job um they get on a bus and they go straight into the into the muscle or fat cells what i think where the problem is when people have issues is that that there that bus is delayed right that bus is not moving fast it's taking its time it's not actually going there until much later and that's where we're going to have that issue with those elevated um blood glucose levels and that's i guess where we would say that's where the insulin resistance is kind of occurring so um when we want to in also let's also put it like this maybe those fat cells and those muscle cells have got a couple of 
guards standing in front of them. They've got people standing in there. Maybe they've got barriers up. And they're not letting the bus go through. And that's what's taking so long with the bus. It sounds like the Euro Tunnel. <laughs> um, but yeah, maybe they've got those guards standing there and they're stopping you from going in and they're not letting that happen. So that's the sensitivity of insulin occurring. Those cells, um, they're not very sensitive. They're really hard faced and they're not letting you get in. Um, so as I keep going off, topic and and wandering into my, my own imagination here when it comes to your diet in general you want to choose you know those uh starchier carbs um those things like those whole grains the you know the quinoa the oats uh you want non-starchy vegetables so broccoli spinach peppers your lean proteins you want to focus on healthy fats you want fiber as well. Fiber's got a role to play. You want high fiber foods. You want your beans, your lentils, your berries. Um, and then we want to avoid or limit highly processed foods. Um, and yeah, just just an overconsumption of those. those uh, I think I touched on it earlier, but the high GI foods. So we are thinking about those um, those foods that are kind of when you do take them in, they kind of um, they increase or or cause a higher spike in glucose, I believe. So we are thinking about things like your white bread, white rice, sugary snacks, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, your next question would how would you know if you'd started to reverse? So. Improved insulin sensitivity could be indicated by better blood sugar control so you're going to have lower fasting blood sugar levels again this is going to be determined by your doctor um you're going to have reduced levels of those insulin running around and you know they're in that bloodstream and they're just sitting there not doing anything um you may also find out that you've experienced that weight loss and you've maintained that healthy way the weight uh you've got enhanced energy levels and reduced fatigue um, and then you've got a lower, lowered risk factors associated with metabolic syndromes, things like your lower, uh, you know, your improved HDL cholesterol, for example, and your lower triglycerides. This sort of stuff is it's going to be determined by your GP when we're thinking about, you know, am I insulin resistant and have I reversed it? Um, so. We kind of touched on the white rice. Should you avoid white white rice? Well, white white rice does have that higher GI glycemic ind index, which means that it does cause that rapid spike in blood sugar. Um, you probably don't want to just exclude it. If you love white rice, just be a bit more moderate with it. Um, you know, it's the it's the same thing I'll always say about things like let's not just like ignore food groups or food types. Um, we want to, you know, keep them in there and maybe just think about being a little bit more moderate with them, not like having it four times a day. It's the same thing with bread. When people go, oh my God, I need to cut out bread. The only reason they need to cut out bread is because they're having it morning, noon and night. They're literally having that same meal every day. Like if I was to wake up or if you was to wake up and have Marmite toast for breakfast, and then you had a sandwich with cheese at lunchtime. And then for dinner, you had garlic bread with pizza. Like, there's not really much food variety going on there. Um, you know, we, I guess, I don't know 100% on this research, but, you know, I know that quite a few people out there now are talking about the whole, you know, the gut microbiome and increasing that and increasing the diversity in the food groups and stuff to help it. Again, I'm not in a position to say whether that is correct or if it's wrong. Um, it could be emerging research. Um, I, I just know that I haven't really been taught much on it. Um, so, yeah. So, again, you know, if you do want to opt for moderate or, or moderation, fine. But if you want to go for alternatives, you can mix things up. You can have quinoa. I really am not a fan of quinoa because I feel like as a vegan, that was that's all I get offered. It's like, you can have some quinoa or quinoa. And it's like, um, no, I'm all right, thanks. <laughs> um, or boring cauliflower rice. I mean, have you tried that? 
Yeah, I have, but I don't think it would make me feel like full oh. if I had it in place yeah. of like normal rice. It wouldn't make you feel satiated. You wouldn't yeah. feel satisfied, right? So it's almost like we'll just have a little less of what you like, right? Um, but yeah, so these sorts of things might might help. Um, but who knows? Right. So and then yes, I think we kind of went over that. The last question, which was submitted by one of the other girls, was what was the difference between insulin resistance and diabetes? So I think we've kind of covered it here, but insulin resistance, your body cells are not responding effectively to the insulin. Um, it can be a precursor to type 2 diabetes, but it may exist on its own, as we know. Um, for example, as I mentioned, you could have PCOS and be insulin resistant. Um, yes. Also, there could be another issue where the pancreas is maybe even producing more insulin, insulin to compensate for the reduced cellular response if you think about this blood this river of blood and this pancreas this way and you know you've got the cells and muscle and fat cells just sitting here waiting hungry for that glucose all these guys could literally just be sitting right in the bloodstream just doing nothing and obviously i believe what happens especially when we start thinking about diabetes things start to die basically that sounds awful but you know uh Things like um, you get like a blurring vision because it starts like collecting behind your eyes. Um, you know, the, the excess glucose has got to go somewhere. Um, yeah, what else? Uh, diabetic neuropathy. So I, I believe because maybe you're starving some of these cells that they could just actually be dying off and you'd be causing some neurological issues. So I think I talked about some of the risks again. Or, or symptoms, should I say, but like the increased thirst, especially around night. Look at us both drinking water right now. Are you drinking water or? Um, it's a protein juice. I thought it was protein water. It's a green one. Looks nice. What flavor? I don't actually like this one, but I bought like a pack of sachets of different flavors. Yeah. This one is apple and elderflower, but. The one from my protein that I love is cranberry and raspberry. It just tastes like Vimto. Oh, okay. Might have Otherwise, to let's go. But that's not vegan. These oh, are the vegan man. ones. They just oh, taste man. a bit like you can taste the artificial sweetener a bit too much. And like yeah. the artificial flavors. Uh, I've got a clear protein actually from my vegan, which I believe is like the same thing as my protein. Um and I've got the strawberry one. And so I think that one's actually quite nice. So... Oh, it's good. Clear. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, it's called like clear or something. Um, but I just get my, I don't know if you've seen it on Instagram. I get these, I've got like, this is a normal size glass of water, but I've got this humongous beer mug. <laughs> so I've got this set of like four beer mugs. We no, I don't think anyone's ever drunk beer out of them. They get used as like protein funnels like they literally you you'll mix your protein shake you put ice in there and then you put your protein shake over the ice so you just get uh, for me personally I get a nice glass straw and the clear is great in that just on like a hot summer's day I know that people I don't know if you experience this but um some people don't feel so hungry in the summer like the heat can make them feel like not eating um so that's a good way of getting it in really isn't it you know, liquid, liquid uh, food, food, liquid protein. <laughs> um, but yes, when we're thinking about specifically diabetes, the, the type two here, um, this is going to happen when the insulin resistance has progressed to the point where the pancreas is like, hey, buddy, I'm not giving you any more insulin and I'm not going to help you maintain those normal blood sugar levels. Um so with those elevated blood sugar levels, as we've said, we're going to have significant health health consequences if these are not managed properly. Um, so, yeah, as you know, it, look, it's it's nice to kind of call this an introduction, but I think we've gone quite deep, would you say? Pretty deep. But I think your your questions were quite, they had some depth in there as well. So 
absolutely love all the questions. Um, for those of you that are listening, I promise that this is the end. Naima, you're going to stay and hang around um, after this, if uh, unless you've got somewhere to go. <laughs> um, but yeah, if you have been listening, thank you so much for, uh, yeah, thank you so much for listening. If you've got any questions, then you can find me on Instagram and send me a message at Richu Bra. I'll spell that out. R-I-C-H-U-B-R-A-R. And we will catch you here next time.